somebody told me a wonderful story, which you should know because you might, you know, draw comfort from it. Uh, this guy was very, pretty experienced. He'd taken fairly high doses of mushrooms before, and he took a six gram dose on a Saturday evening in his apartment in LA. And um, this heart thing began to develop that he identified as a fibrillation or something. So he tried to hold it back and keep not notice and not and it kept getting stronger and strong it never lets you do that by the way the not noticing it's a paradox you didn't take this to not notice so uh, eventually he becomes thoroughly alarmed and he tries to call a couple of his friends well it's Saturday night nobody's home so then just this tremendous sense of abandonment settles over this guy. His friends aren't there when he needs them. He's going to die here in his apartment and be found days later, so forth and so on. And he gets this ball rolling, see? <laughs> so finally he despairs. He's a psychotherapist, an MD, blah, blah, everything. He despairs. He calls 911. <laughs> So they come, they get him, they rush him to the hospital, um, they put him in a ward, they, and he, by the time all this has happened, and he's gotten all this attention, and probably a little second all, uh, he's feeling pretty good about it all. So then he says to the guy on duty, he says, uh, I, I feel like I have to tell you, I, I took psilocybin mushrooms, uh, do you think that that brought this on? <laughs> and the guy said, uh, no, you had an anxiety attack. We get people with this all the time. We don't know anything about psychedelic drugs. <laughs> so, you know, it, it isn't the drug you have to worry about. It's yourself. You have to discipline your hind brain. You have to be able to say, listen, shut up. We're going to come through this. Just shut up about it. Because it's saying, mm, but don't you think we should call somebody? And, but, and, uh, <laughs> um, we shouldn't treat it with such levity because it is a serious issue. I mean, I've been in many circumstances where vital signs seem to have fallen so low in my own perception that I just was saying to myself, keep breathing, keep looking, keep breathing, keep looking. And I felt, you know, that we, I was in a submarine five and a half miles down. Easy does it through here. Breath, attention, breath attention because you have the feeling that if you don't keep your attention on your breath you will simply stop breathing well now it's interesting people who don't worry much about psychedelics you tell them a story like that and they say well isn't that the bit that you take these drugs and you think you're dying and then you get straight and then you don't die and then you're really happy isn't that what it's supposed to do i thought that was what it was about well, in fact, if you go back into the literature, in the 1960s, the Tibetan Book of the Dead crowd was saying, you will be flung from hell to paradise and back again on about a 40-minute schedule for several hours. And they prepared themselves for these bad trip situations by anticipating it. And I, I don't really think there's that much to it. I think your mind is very fragile in that state. And, you know, a bad thought quickly becomes a cascade. And you have to know how to, dis how to stop these cascades. A very practical technique that I use is uh, I take a hit of cannabis thinking you're going to die, at least for me, is not all that rare. I mean, if somebody invites me to go sailing with them on the bay on a Sunday afternoon, at least twice in the afternoon, I will sign off completely and just assume that's it, you know. Maybe I'm a little paranoid, you know, or maybe I have crazy friends. <laughs>